Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. We'll get started in just a few moments. I want to give a chance for everyone to log on. All right, let's begin. My name is Allison Rendelman, and I'm team lead of the Customer Success Associates here at YCharts. Our host for today is Connor Kitko, senior analyst on the marketing team and one of our main contributors to the YCharts blog. Today, Connor's going to walk us through what's new in model portfolios, showing us three ways we can fortify your portfolio and present to clients. We hope to update you on new features related to portfolios and walk through a few examples using YCharts to fortify your models. Please, if you have any questions during the webinar, you can submit them on the left-hand side of your screen and we'll follow up soon with the information you're looking for. Do note that the content of this webinar is meant for educational purposes only and is not intended to be used as investment advice, nor is YCharts acting as an advising party regarding client funds in any way. Finally, we'll post a recording of this webinar to the Support Topics page of YCharts, and a copy will be sent to all attendees. Now I'm going to hand it over to Connor to get started. Thanks, Allison. As was said, today we're talking about some portfolio-centric functionality on YCharts. A little bit more advanced and some newer functionality that's just been added to the platform. So if you have more experience using YCharts, then the items we'll cover today will help you take your portfolio analysis to the next level. And if you're newer to YCharts, then still pay attention and you can reach out to your support contact or your account manager to see how you can get these features into your workflows. The first thing we're talking about today is custom portfolio and fund reports. These are PDF-based reports with customizable colors, data, and disclosures. These reports are client and compliance friendly, and we'll show you some examples of reports that break down portfolios, and then also reports that help you compare two individual funds against each other. Next, we'll talk about identifying and avoiding correlations in the market. We'll examine correlations both using quick flows on the YCharts platform and also using the YCharts Excel add-in. Finally, one of our newer features on YCharts is the My Lists functionality, which makes it even easier for you to analyze your portfolios using a few different tools on the platform. Everything we're talking about today can take your portfolio creation, management, and most importantly, that presentation and communication to your clients up a notch. So let's get started. Starting from my dashboard, I'll click in the search bar at the top banner here, and I'll look for one of my model portfolios, the balanced with growth. This is a portfolio that I've already created here in YCharts, and to give a quick rundown of this page we're on now, this is a model portfolio quote page. And you'll be able to see this page and all this information for any portfolio on your YCharts account. So quickly, this is the quote tab. And you can see we have a returns chart, some key stats, asset allocations across different asset types, our holdings, some more return information and risk info. And then as I click on these different tabs, I'll start on the performance tab. This takes me just down a level deeper into my portfolio, looking at returns versus a benchmark over different periods. I can look at my allocations against those different asset types, regional exposures, market cap, stock style, and then also fixed income exposures on the right side here. So as you're getting used to model portfolios and you're uploading your holdings, definitely check out all these tabs to see everything this application has to offer. Today we're talking about custom reports and these PDF reports. So in the top right corner of every model portfolio quote page is this reports button. When I click here, and I can see this list of all of the pre-built report formats that are available in your YCharts account. So there are two different kinds of report. There are these overview reports, which look at one portfolio or one fund at a time. And then we have comparison reports, 
which are usually denoted by this side-by-side -side verbiage. And what these reports do is take one portfolio versus another or one fund versus another and give you a apples-to-apples side-by-side comparison of all the pros and cons of that portfolio versus another. So to show you a quick example of one of these, I'll click on Comprehensive Overview Report. I scroll down and click Next. And now I can enter in some information that makes this really personalized for the client or prospect that you're talking to. You can give the report a title. You can enter in the client's name and then also give your contact information here. And I click Generate. This automatically downloads a PDF of my report, which I'll now open. And here you can see that I have my firm's logo at the top. This title page is customized, prepared for the client by financial advisor, your contact information. And now we get into the meat of the report. So we're looking at returns over different periods against the benchmark, whether it's periodic or annual returns. We have some more allocation and exposure information related to stocks some more geographic and stock style exposure, the holdings within our portfolio, and then onto bond sector exposures, risk information. We can see our risk reward module here is comparing the portfolio's return against its standard deviation over these different time periods. And then we also have some information about our holdings and then definitions of everything that's within the report. So this is named the Comprehensive Overview Report very much so because it covers everything that you might want to talk about with a prospect or a client regarding their portfolio. Now, you might be looking at this and say it's great, it's a lot of information though, and my firm really focuses on risk management. So that's where all of our conversations start. If you want to customize these reports beyond your logo, beyond your custom colors, you can use this customization form. And if you ever want to customize your reports, what you can do is from anywhere on Y charts, you can see this green chat icon at the top. You might also see a green box down in your bottom right corner that says chat. And when you open this up, you can chat into our customer success team. They are available during normal business hours. They're always very responsive and very knowledgeable and they'll be happy to get you the link to this customization form so that you can customize your PDF reports. Starts just by entering your YCharts account email, and then you can select what you want to customize. So we talked about those overview reports and the comparison reports. You may want to be customizing only one or the other or both so that you can use these reports for different use cases. The overview reports, since we're looking at one portfolio, are great for client conversations. The comparison reports, where you might be comparing a recommended strategy versus a prospect's uh, current strategy, the comparison reports are great for that. And so you might want to customize your PDF reports differently based on those use cases. You can also see fundamental charts. So we'll talk about the logo and colors in a second, but your logo and custom colors can also be pulled into fundamental charts. So if you want that to be made available, check the fundamental charts box here. Now, like I said, you can click to upload your logo. A high resolution .png format file is the best. And then you can also enter in the colors if they're similar with your logo or other colors that you want to use on your reports. And then finally, uh, you can check each module that you want to include. So looking at this report as an example, you can see that we're starting with return information, and then we move into some stock exposure and allocation. So these are all of those modules that make up the report. And you can choose which ones you want to include or which ones you want to skip over. I'll also call out that two of these modules, the top 10 holdings and all holdings modules, are actually even further customizable. If you want to, we'll go down and look at this holdings part of the report. And if you want to show a different metric in here that maybe you like to look at annualized returns versus total returns or vice versa, 
you can customize these even further and once you submit the report someone from y charts will get back in touch with you and find out which metric you want to include in that field finally you can order these modules so if you like to talk about risk first and foremost then we can start with a cover page cumulative return and then risk info and risk versus reward and then order these 1 2 14 15 and so on in whichever way you want this report to be compiled finally a feature that makes these reports really compliance friendly is including your own custom disclosure language so if you want to upload your firm's disclosure which would go beyond what the cut the default disclosure disclosure is excuse me you can just enter all of that language or text right here and we will get that into the system so that whenever you download a report, your firm's disclosure appears there. So that is an overview of the overview report where we're talking just about one portfolio, one fund at a time. Let's talk about this use case where we want to be comparing two things against each other. And to do that, I'm going to click on this holdings tab. And now I'm looking at all of the holdings within my portfolio. So looking at some of my holdings, I see I have this Alger Small Cap Focus Fund. I also have this Templeton Emerging Markets ETF. And these are two areas that might be the higher beta holdings in your portfolio. And you may want to revisit your allocations to these two funds given the current market climate and volatility. So what I'm going to do is click on AOFIX, the ticker for Alger Small Cap Focus. And now I'm taken to that fund's quote page, very similar look and feel to the model, model portfolio quote page we were just looking at. When I click on the reports button here, a similar menu is brought up. And I want to look at one of these side-by-side -side reports, and I'll use the side-by-side -side allocation report. I want to see how the Alger Small Cap Fund and that Templeton Emerging Market Fund that we talked about, how they differ, how they stack up on their allocations. When I click Next, now I can choose the fund that I want to compare AOFIX against. And so the ticker of my other holding was EMF, Templeton Emerging Markets. And one thing to note here that's awesome, you can see it in the language at the top of this screen, is that we're comparing a mutual fund against an ETF. So we can go across fund types when creating these reports, uh, which can be pretty impactful. So once I click Next, I can once again enter in the information about who I'm preparing this report for and my own contact information. This report automatically downloads as well. And now I see my logo and all my info is still here, but now we're talking about comparing these two funds against each other. I'm going to scroll down and slowly scroll through some of this information here. You can see asset allocations, geographic exposure. We know EMF is emerging markets, so we got a lot more emerging market exposure and a lot more international exposure here. Market capitalizations, AOFIX is small cap, so naturally we have a higher, a relatively higher percent of the fund in small and medium cap companies. What I want to talk about is this stock sector exposure. So when comparing these two funds and what percent of my portfolio they make up, I'm thinking about the market environment right now, and I'm thinking about this emerging and hopefully sustained economic recovery. So I want to think about increasing my allocation to cyclical sectors, which typically lead in these economic recoveries. EMF has 37% exposure to cyclical sectors, whereas AOFIX has 7.5%. So if you're thinking about playing this economic recovery, then you know that you may want to increase your, your weighting of EMF in this portfolio. This is just one example of how you can use these reports to really dig in on your portfolio holdings, especially when you have mutual funds or ETFs as your holdings. You want to be able to dig even further, one layer deeper. So these reports do a great job of allowing you to do that. As said before, both portfolio and fund reports are customizable and brandable. 
just like we make these different styles of reports available in Y charts here for you to use, you can customize the modules and the data shown to focus on either high-level information when speaking with clients and prospects, or maybe when you're getting into the more nitty-gritty details with your investment committee or portfolio managers, that's when you look at more detailed, more drilled-down information. So here is where we'll change gears. We just talked about using reports to present portfolios and other information to clients. And we'll switch over to the other aspect of today's webinar, fortifying your portfolio strategies. And we'll use some recently released Y charts features that save you time on portfolio management to do that. I'm going to look at my holdings again, and we'll continue with that. Excuse me, I need to get back to my model portfolio. So now I'm back on my model portfolio quote page, and we want to talk about this additional functionality that helps me investigate correlation. So I'm going to look at my holdings of my model portfolio, and we just compared AOFIX with EMF. Let's talk about correlations between those holdings and others in my portfolio. So on the right-hand side of the screen here, you'll see this Quick Flows tab. This opens up the Quick Flows menu, and as I enter in any security name, what Quick Flows does is compiles very impactful, very commonly used analyses or workflows on Y charts into single click efforts. So I just type in a security name, and then right at my fingertips I have all these different kinds of analyses that I can look at to further investigate Apple or whatever, whatever other security name I type in here. If I click on comparison, then what I can do, if I click on comparison, then what I can do is enter in a few securities and run some pre-built analyses that compare them against each other. So continuing with our example from before, let's enter in some of our holdings. AOFIX is the small cap fund. EMF is our emerging markets ETF. And then let's add in some fixed income funds that we have, both of which are from PIMCO, one of which is domestic and one is internationally focused. So as I enter in my four security names, just like we saw on the single side, comparison shows me all the options that I have for these pre-built analyses I can run. And like I said, we're going to talk about correlations. So We've seen some crazy market action in 2020 and also some crazy things happening with some commonly held correlations in the market. Equity and bond markets both crashed then rallied in unison after COVID-19 started influencing both equity and fixed income markets. And the results of things like COVID-19 and heightened volatility is that a, long, a lot of long-held beliefs about correlations in the market are breaking down, at least temporarily. So I want to see how my holdings are, are correlated. I'll click on correlations analysis. And Quick Flows automatically brings me into fundamental charts where I can compare the correlations between those different securities in my portfolio. Now, for anyone who needs a refresher on looking at correlation charts, we can basically go as high or as low as 1 and negative 1. A positive one correlation means that two securities move together in unison perfectly. Negative one means that they move in the opposite direction. And then zero means that they're not correlated at all. So looking here, I can use the list browser on the left side of my screen to choose which fund I'm comparing against the other holdings in my portfolio. So here, when I'm looking at this Alger small cap focus fund against itself, it of course has a perfect 1.00 correlation. However, looking at the Alger small cap focus fund versus others, we see how these correlations come and go over time. Let's take our time period view down to one year so that we can really focus on correlations leading into and during COVID-19. As I click over, I can change my view to take the perspective of different funds in my portfolio. 
And one thing that perhaps I may want to look for is we have some equity and some fixed income funds in here. So here's a great example of this PIMCO International Bond Fund is pretty correlated to our Templeton emerging markets, both with high international exposures. It makes sense, but maybe we don't want that high correlation in our portfolio. So I actually had a client of ours, Joe, uh, we discussed recently how diversification in name only is not the same thing as actually having diversified performance in your portfolio. So it's not just about the names of the asset classes, but how those asset classes are actually performing. Because sometimes that things don't move as you would expect. So this quick flow helps you see how those theoretical correlations really stand up in the market at a given point in time. I'll click reset and we can show just how we did with our portfolio holdings. Let's bring in our portfolio itself. So I'm looking at my model portfolio balance with growth. And as proxies for some major market indices, let's pull in some indexed ETFs. I pulled in SPY for the S&P 500, this Dow Jones ETF, DIA, and then finally QQQ, which is a NASDAQ composite tracking ETF. So I want to see how my portfolio is correlated to these three major indices over and throughout uh, COVID-19. When I click correlation analysis, the same thing comes in here. And I'll use my list browser again to click over till I'm taking the perspective of my portfolio. So now the one-to-one -one is on my portfolio versus itself. And then looking here, very strong correlations across the board to the major exchanges. 0 0.987, 0 0.982 to the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones. However, one thing to note is that we have a slightly weaker correlation against the tech-heavy NASDAQ. So this might be something to pay attention to as the NASDAQ and uh, tech in general is driving the market right now. This correlation analysis showed me that we may be missing out on the party, and this is a valuable insight to have if we wanted to consider increasing our exposure to tech. I'll also show how you can turn this into a really great client communication tool in the presentation view up here. I'll switch to on. Just going to make this slightly smaller so everyone can see. My logo is down in the corner here. One, another thing that we added through that customization form. And then on chart options, I'm going to click show custom colors. Just change the color, so now I got the alignment between the color of my series and the color of my logo. It looks beautiful. And then I'll click Show Date Range. And this is a compliance-friendly feature as well. We've heard from some advisors that showing the date ranges on the chart satisfies some wishes from their compliance departments. So that feature is available as well under this chart options here. You can imagine also a similar use case for this correlation analysis. If you wanted to plug in, say, some iShares ETFs for each of the major S&P sectors and see how those are correlated against each other to really see, hey, is it the cyclical or the defensive sectors that are really correlated right now? What might I see? Which sector is driving the market? things of that nature. So that's a great conversation starter for you and your investment decision makers. Now I'll talk about another way to analyze correlations using Y charts and we'll click on tools and then Excel. This is where you can access and download the Y charts Excel add-in. If you are a, on a professional subscription and you're using a Windows machine, then the Excel add-in is extremely powerful for automatically populating all of your models, all of your Excel sheets with the latest data. Instead of you manually entering data every time you open a model, just link it to the YCharts Excel add-in and it'll automatically update every time that you refresh. I'll click on templates here and you can absolutely build models from scratch using the Y charts add-in, but we provide for you a lot of these really impactful templates and you can get a preview of what each of them look like. So this is a fun comparison template. 
the one that I want to talk about right now is correlations between portfolio and custom benchmark. Take a quick preview here and you see we're going to look at correlations in less of a visual trend format and more of a data format here. Click download and then I can get to work in this template. So we have two blue columns that you can see in this template. The first one is where I enter in my tickers for my holdings. I've already done that. And then you enter in your weightings for the holdings within your portfolio as well. Down below, we can customize the benchmark that we're comparing our portfolio to. And we can weight different indices to represent different uh, percentages of this blended benchmark we've created. Now, looking at the actual correlation matrix, you can see that we're looking at a five-year period over which these securities are correlated. And looking at these red cells with a 1.00 in them is each holding compared to itself. So it has a perfect one correlation. Now, we want to see which other holdings are also strongly correlated to each other. So that would be any other red or orange or similarly high numbers in here. And we can see, just like we saw on the front end of Y charts, that some uh, of our holdings are very highly correlated. So this Templeton Emerging Markets Fund is very correlated to the GMO Quality Fund. Uh, similarly, that fund is very correlated to our Alger Small Cap and our Invesco Oppenheimer Global Opportunities Fund. So you also see that the green cells uh, represent a relatively close to zero correlation. So looking at our money markets fund here, as we, as we would expect, this fund is really not that correlated to any of our other holdings. You can then save this down to your desktop and every time that you reopen it, this data will automatically update with the latest and you can pull it up whenever you want to take a look and whether that's on a weekly or monthly or whatever period, investigate the correlations in your portfolio. So now we just showed you using the Excel add-in how to look at correlations. We also previously looked at quick flows. Now we're back onto YCharts.com. So let's take a look at how some other YCharts tools help you also dig into your portfolio and its holdings. In our top banner here, I'll hover over tools and then click on comp tables. If you're more of a data oriented person, comp tables is a tool that lets you pull in securities lists, add the metrics you want to compare those securities, and then even create custom scores uh, to rank those securities based on the metrics you're looking at. There are two areas we're looking at, so I can type to search here, and I can pull in any of the securities that I want, and then down below, I can look at the, the metrics that I want to compare those securities on, once again with that very powerful type search functionality. But here we're going to talk about this lists button. When I click lists, I get the security list browser, and I can instead of typing in those metrics one by one, I can just look at, you know, different indices and pull in all the securities that are constituents of those indices. But this tab right here, my lists, is what I want to talk about today. And you'll see that when I click my lists, the categories that it comes up with are watch lists. So any watch list that I've built on Y charts, I can pull into comp tables and do more analysis the results of any of my fund screens, the results of my stock screens. So any list that you've created on Y charts is now really right within grasp in this My List tab. Let's click on Model Portfolio Holdings. And so if I ever want to do some analysis and compare the holdings within one of my portfolios, this is where I would come. I click Model Portfolio, Balance with Growth. That's the portfolio we've been talking about today. When I click Submit, boom, all of my 11 holdings are now in comp tables, and then I can choose individual metrics or a metric set with which to compare my holdings. So I'll click on Metric Sets, Open Metric Set, and the first one I'll bring in is this Mutual Funds and ETFs metric set that I've created. 
This gives me some good high-level fund and ETF information. So let's look at uh, you know expense ratios, turnover ratios, NAV returns, category rankings. How has each fund performed within its category? So Templeton Emerging Markets is an emerging market ETF. Its category rank is one, meaning that it is the number one fund for three-year total NAV returns against other emerging markets ETFs. And then other information about alpha, sharp ratio, and max drawdown. So this is some basic but very important fund metrics about your holdings. We can also bring in another metric set, and I'll click rank and category to talk more about uh, those category rankings that I just mentioned. This metric set looks at all of the holdings within my portfolio and then looks at their NAV returns compared to their category over different periods of time. I'll just sort these right here. And like I said, one means that it's the number one fund in its category. So aside from your allocations to which fund, whether you're choosing between one of your holdings or another, you also want to see if the fund that you've included in your portfolio is the best way to get exposure to that asset class or that sector, what have you. Looks like the Templeton Emerging Markets Fund, except for one period of returns, has been the top fund in its category for a while. Some of my other holdings can't really say the same. So this, uh, the commodity tracking fund that I'm using from Invesco, perhaps not one of the best funds in its category over the last 10 years, I might look to replace that ETF with a similar one that performs better and still gets me that commodity exposure that I'm seeking. I'll show how to use this My List functionality in another tool. So over coming to Tools and then down to Time Series Analysis. The difference between comp tables and time series analysis is that time series adds this history component. Comp tables is point in time, looking at the metrics for my holdings as of today. Time series lets me see how those metrics have trended over time. So once again, I'll click on lists, my lists. I'll look at model portfolio holdings, and then I'll find that model portfolio balance with growth that we've been talking about pulls in my holdings just the same, and now I can enter in some metrics that I want to see their historical trend. So I'll say total return NAV, and then I'll also say total return price. So we can see the return of the fund's assets versus the return of the fund's market price. And then I can change my frequency. So let's say we want to look at this on a monthly basis. And we're looking at five years of history here between 2015 and 2020. And what time series is really great for is filling out these data sets, getting everything in one consistent and very usable format like we have right now, getting all my periods aligned, and then exporting it to Excel via a CSV. Or if we want to export it to the YCharts Excel add-in, once we do so, all of these tickers and all of this data will be live linked to the YCharts database. So once again, every time you open up those workbooks, the latest data is automatically populated. Finally, I'll talk about using my lists in one more tool, email reports. In my opinion, email reports is one of the most unsung heroes of YCharts. Email reports let you pick the securities and data that you want to check up on on a regular basis, and then YCharts will automatically send that information to you via email at the frequency of your choosing. So I'm going to click Create New, and what we're going to do is create an email report that updates me about this model portfolio we've been looking at. So I'll call it My Portfolio Update. You can enter in a description for your own reference, and then you can select the frequency with which you want this email to be sent to you, so daily, weekly, monthly, or quarterly. Weekly is probably the most popular, uh, and I'll click on Add Module here to start building out 
what I want to see in this weekly email sent right to the email that's associated with my Y charts account. So I'll click add module and I'm going to start uh, just to give you a quick rundown of what's available. You can include a weekly market commentary that we write to recap the previous week in the market, an economic calendar of important economic data releases, security list, performance reviews, fundamental charts, more calendars related to stocks like earnings or dividend announcements. Let's start with this fundamental chart. I'll click next and then I can actually pull in a chart that I created previously. I want to look at my balance with growth portfolio versus the market and I can preview this module to see how it'll look in my email report. So looking here I see my portfolio versus the market over the last couple months and I'm going to continue adding modules to build out what will be a full report sent to me. Now I'll go to fund security list review. Since my portfolio is made up of mutual funds and ETFs, the same my lists tab is available here within email reports. You can click model portfolio holdings and then find that portfolio that you want this update to focus on. We can preview this module as well. So we, you can preview as you're building and add or take away components that you do or don't like. And we'll just keep moving through with a security return summary. Once again, clicking on my lists, model portfolio holdings, and the same portfolio we've been discussing. A note comes up that says, hey, you have 11 holdings in this portfolio. The max that uh, email reports can present is eight. So just a heads up that if you have a security list that's longer than eight securities, within that email report, it'll be trimmed down to eight. And then finally, we'll add one more component and let's do this economic review. So this is gonna give me for uh, you can choose whether you want major U.S. indicators or headline U.S. indicators. And this will give me information about the latest economic data that has come out. So now I can preview all of this together and this will show me exactly how it will appear in my inbox every Monday morning when this report is sent to me. I get my chart of the portfolio versus the market, some return information about my holdings, a different way of presenting that return information over different periods and showing obviously darker green numbers for more positive, darker red for more negative. And then that headline US indicators review of the latest economic data. And this is just a preview, but if this were within your email browser, then all of these names and tickers will be linked. So it provides a really easy way for you to dig deeper if you see something that is out of the ordinary or slightly concerning you can jump back into Y charts and see what's going on in the market. So in review we showed you how you can customize portfolio and fund reports to drive conversations with prospects and clients. We used both QuickFlows and the Excel add-in to identify correlations within your portfolio. And we use the new My List tab within several YCharts tools to make analyzing and managing your portfolio easier and faster than ever. If you have any questions or feedback about YCharts webinars or anything we covered today, please let us know. You can use the chat function within this webinar, or you can chat into us on YCharts.com, and you can even reach out to your account manager and ask for help with anything you want or need. Thank you again, and that concludes the webinar for today. Thank you, Connor, for giving us a tour on three ways we can fortify and present our portfolios to clients. And thank you, everyone, who attended today's webinar. I do want to reiterate that a recording of this webinar will be sent to all attendees and posted on YCharts in case you want to review anything we went over or to share it with your colleagues. For any questions you might have submitted during the presentation, we'll be reaching out soon with the information you're looking for. We hope you found our demonstration insightful and that it might lead to informed conversations with your clients. We always appreciate any feedback you might have for us 
If you have any questions regarding what we covered today or want to learn more, please feel free to reach out. Thanks.